Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some momentum problems that use graphs. So the first piece of advice I can give you is that whenever they give us a graph in physics, like any graph, let's say one that looks like this, then we are either going to be finding the slope of the graph at a specific point or the area of the graph between two points. The way we know which one to use depends on the equation. For instance, I don't know if you remember this, but hopefully you do. Velocity is equal to distance over time. When you have division in your equation, that's when you find slope of the graph. And you're going to use area whenever it's multiplication. For instance, impulse J equals force times time. Because it's multiplication, this is when you're finding the area. Now, since we're doing momentum specifically, almost all the equations have multiplication in them. Meaning, impulse is j equals force times time. Momentum p equals mass times velocity. Almost all these equations are multiplication. As a matter of fact, I can't think of any momentum equations that have division in it, except of course, what we just said, velocity equals distance over time, and that velocity is the same velocity right there. So potentially you can see division, but most of the time it's gonna be multiplication. So let's go ahead and solve a couple questions using graphs. And you can try these on your own first, pause the video, and then if you get stuck, go ahead and unpause it and see my solution. So for this first one, I have a graph of force versus time, and then this is what the graph's gonna look like. Starts out flat, then increases to six, is flat until four, and then comes back down at five. And my question's going to be, what is the impulse for this scenario? So go ahead and give it a try. And if you get stuck, unpause the video. So here we go. First, we remember that impulse J is equal to force times time. Again, this means I'm gonna be finding the area for the first five seconds here. So this is a trapezoid shape here. Maybe you don't know the equation of a trapezoid. That's fine. What I would tell you to do in that case is break it up into three shapes. The black triangle, the blue rectangle from two to four, and then the green triangle at the very end. And we just gotta find these three areas and add them together. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. So one half times the base of this triangle is two minus one, so just one times the height six. That's going to be three for the area of the left triangle. Then for the blue rectangle, it's gonna be base times height. The base is from two to four, so the base is only two. Height is six. So the area of that's gonna be 12. And then finally, the area of the green, it's gonna be one half base times height. One half, base is one, and the height is six. And that gives us three again. So then if I want my final answer for the total impulse, I just gotta add these three answers together. Three plus three plus 12 is going to give me 18. And the units for impulse, there are two answers you could give. One is the kilogram meter per second, or you can give units of newtons times seconds. Both of these are correct. And that's it for the first one. So if you have any questions on that first one, please post them in the comments below. We have one more question we're gonna look at today. This one is gonna be harder. For this one, starts out the same with a force versus time graph. This time though, the times are four and eight. On the y-axis, we have positive 10, and down here, negative eight. And then the graph is going to look like this. Goes up, then goes down, all the way to negative eight, and then goes back up again right there. So we have our shapes, but now let me ask the question. I'll tell you that this was the impulse graph or the force versus time graph for an object with a mass of three kilograms. This object had an initial velocity of positive two meters per second and my question is, I want you to find the final velocity of this object. So this is a pretty tough question, but we're gonna do the same idea, just we have a new equation that we're gonna have. And that equation is impulse J equals force times time. But remember that J impulse is also equal to delta P, change in momentum. In other words, P final minus P initial, momentum final minus momentum initial. So if you think you've got it, go ahead, pause the video, give it a try. If not, here's what we do. First, let's find the area because that is gonna be the impulse. 
This time I have two shapes. I have the black triangle here and the blue triangle down here. If you thought for some reason that we need to break this up into two right triangles like this and like that, you are mistaken. You don't need to make a right triangle. This is perfectly fine if it's like this. So for the black triangle, area is one half base times height. Base is four, height is 10. Plug that in a calculator, or honestly, it's not too bad. You get 20 for the first triangle. Then for the blue one, that area, it is gonna be negative, cause it's, well, negative. And then one half, base is eight minus four, so four, and the height is eight. Well, technically negative eight, and that's where the negative could have gone. I don't wanna put negative eight twice. So four times eight is 32, times negative one half is negative 16. And so that means all I gotta do is do 20 minus 16, and my impulse J is going to be four. And I don't care about the units right now. So if I wanna find the final velocity, I have to set this impulse four equal to the change in momentum, P final minus P initial. Remember that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So really the delta here is gonna be MV final minus MV initial. The mass we know is three, V final is what I'm solving for, minus mass is three, V initial is two. So simplifying, four equals three V final minus six. I'm solving for VF, so add six to both sides. 10 equals three V final, divide by three, we'll get a final speed of positive 3.3 meters per second. And there we go, that's how we solve that one. Significantly harder than the last one, but still a good problem and definitely one you should know how to solve. So if you have any questions with those, please post them in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.